Hey, I'm Geek Pastimes, and we suddenly have so much information about Call of Duty Vanguard's launch. On the Call of Duty blog, they released a massive post detailing so much stuff about it. I still have some questions, but in this video, I'm going to try and break down all of the information they gave us across the blog, across Sledgehammer Games tweets about what they've changed for multiplayer and their blog, and some other little bits and pieces that we've seen. I'm going to try and break this video up so there'll be a section on campaign, multiplayer, zombies, and Warzone. The multiplayer and Warzone zone sections are by far the biggest but there's a couple of little snippets of information for everything else if you like the video please don't forget to like and subscribe so let's start with campaign this is by far the simplest one the campaign of course is going to be playable at launch on november 5th and you're going to be working as the various members of vanguard to try and stop project phoenix which seems to be the last ditch efforts of some nazis to start a new world order um they've named like five playable characters who are kind of the main people in vanguard but it's interesting it does say an other characters implying that maybe we're going to get to play as a few other people obviously that's something that's pretty common in call of duty campaigns that you get to play as uh, things from a couple of different perspectives and in the campaign blog they posted a few weeks ago they talked specifically about how they had lots of different writers from different backgrounds working on this sometimes on the same mission to try and have that kind of diversity so all of the different characters will see things in different ways and hopefully you'll get some different perspectives on what's going on it also sounds like we're going to have loads of different different things you know there's different theaters of war that they've talked about before it sounds like the missions are going to be really really varied so hopefully that should be a lot of fun now i want to talk about multiplayer now there's a lot to get through in multiplayer there's loads of different things to talk about so i'm going to try and go through this as carefully as i can first of all the first mode we're going to have the thing that we already experienced in the alpha is champions hill we'll talk about that first because it's simple it has one map that's split up into four the same one that we got to play in that playstation alpha it's going to have solos duos and trios play this at launch that's pretty much the same as what we knew about before then the other modes that we're going to get for the main multiplayer at launch are free for all team deathmatch kill confirm domination search and destroy and hard point which are all sort of mainstay call of duty modes you know them you hopefully love them um they haven't gone anywhere interesting to note some of the ones that are missing from that so any of the party games like gun game or one in the chamber or sticks and stones which is my favorite or prop hunt there's nothing like that but i would expect to see them come back in the different seasons um there's no capture the flag either and again that's one that they often add a little bit later there's also the new mode patrol which i really liked it works a lot like hard point but instead of the zone sort of teleporting around the map it actually moves on a kind of patrol route so you need to keep up with it and that's really cool because rather than having like the people in the zone being the one to assess up and defensive instead you can actually kind of set up ambushes to kill the defenders as they move into the area i think that's really really cool obviously all of those modes are going to be playable on the 16 maps that we're getting the 16 sort of main maps and we got a little bit of a chance to read about all of those now we get to find out a little about them and see a screenshot of each one there's some remakes so there's remakes of dome and castle from world at war which they're awesome maps i can't wait to see that and a really good thing that there's plenty of brand new maps so there's like 14 brand new maps as far as i can tell on november 17th which is just 12 days after launch Launch, we also get our first dlc map which is a remake of shipment which is obviously going to be great news for everyone who wants to grind out camos and things like that then season one begins on december 2nd and they've already said there's going to be new multiplayer maps then so on top of the 16 launch maps and shipment making it 17 maps then we're going to get new maps like a little bit less than a month after launch with season one which is insane how much how many maps we're getting in this in multiplayer it is the playlists are kind of split up into three different experiences they call them and this is tactical which is 6v6 assault which is 7v7 up to 18v18 depending on the maps like the biggest maps in assault will be 18v18 and the smallest ones will be 7v7 and then blitz which goes from 8v8 up to 24 versus 24 again depending on the map now this was something we did see in the beta and if you want to see the quick match you can just sort of go in and it'll put you in any one of them you don't know what sort of experience you're going to get um but it really did make a difference to the sort of feel of the game so if you want to go in you want to get something that's really 
chaotic, like really crazy, and you just want to like level up guns and things like that, you can hop into blitz matches and just have constant chaos. And if you want something a little bit more careful, a little bit more considered, maybe you're playing with a group of friends and you want to actually, you know, be winning games and communicating all the time, maybe you'll hop into the tactical playlists. I'll be really interested to see what the player counts like for Shipman. Like, are they going to try and do 24v24 in Shipman? I kind of hope so, just to see what happens. Um, they've also confirmed that hardcore and custom games are going to be there at launch. Also, one thing I'm really excited about, there's going to be clans there at launch. They've said these are replacing regiments. You're going to be able to form a clan of your friends. You'll have your own clan tag as per usual. You're also going to have a custom emblem. So I'm guessing they're going to have the emblem editor from previous Call of Duties. That would be pretty cool. Um, and you can kind of level up your clan, which looks like it will give you bonuses to other XP and stuff and might get you some other perks like calling cards or something like that. So that's cool that clans are a bit more of a serious thing. So in Black Ops Cold War, that didn't exist at all. And personally, I find it really, really useful because I really like people who watch my stream and stuff like that to be able to play with us easily. But I don't want my friends list being really cluttered with like tons of people that I don't really know. So a clan is a perfect place for that. And I'm really happy that that's coming back into the game and it's going to be there at launch. Also at launch, there's going to be 12 operators. And one really cool thing about the operators is that they said there's going to be skins to unlock through gameplay for every single one, including like a master skin, which would be like a special gold one. Um, so that's really cool that we're not just going to be able to get the skins for guns, camos for guns, but you're also going to be able to level up the different operators. It also says you can customize their finishing moves, their infiltration poses, and MVP poses. So those two last poses are something new. I feel like we had those in um, World War II in Sledgehammer's last game, but that's obviously another type of sort of cosmetic that you're going to be able to get in the battle pass and things like that, um, and in bundles, I'm guessing. But the infiltration pose, I assume, is for the beginning of the game, and then the MVP pose is if you selected as MVP, if you're one of the MVPs at the end of the match, you'll be able to pick a pose for that as well. They've said there's 38 weapons in the game and they went through like the different categories and how many uh, types of gun there are in each of those categories. And they've said there's a ridiculous number of attachments. Like some of them have huge numbers of attachments um, in the game. It's also nice to see that like things like the combat shield are there at launch. And there's four launchers, interestingly. I found that kind of interesting for a World War II game. Like trying to think what sort of launches that could be because obviously there's not going to be anything like the javelin i assume there's not going to be something that locks on because i'm guessing they didn't have things like that in world war ii but if you do know let me know in the comments what sort of launches could they do i'm assuming there'll be like you know an allied one and then a german one um but i don't know what other sorts of things there's going to be that'll be interesting they've said there's going to be 18 perks and over a dozen kill streaks in the game i think we've seen most of them from the beta i'm not sure sledgehammer games have also detailed some of the changes they made from the beta um, and they talked about things like you know they made a joke about nerfing the sun because that was super bright before sometimes um one of the big things is that they've added ninja as a perk which will make you silent all of the time now, they've talked about other things they've tweaked, including audio, to make general footsteps much louder. They've tweaked spawns, they've done loads of balance changes and things like that. They've toned down loads of visual effects. But that thing about having Ninja as a perk that makes you silent, I think, is going to be something that obviously lots of people are excited about because they like the idea of having, you know, dead silence as a constant perk. Um, it's something that helps you sneak up on campers and things like that, which is really cool. But then on the other hand, will it become one of those perks that just everybody runs, so then nobody will ever be able to hear footsteps ever again? Not really sure about that one, but it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Obviously, all the stuff like that is things that they can change very easily once the game's been released and, like, it's out in the wild. They've also confirmed, I think they mentioned this before, but they've sort of reconfirmed a field of view slider coming to console. Now, onto zombies. There's very little information about zombies. Well, very little new information. Duran Fang is obviously coming at launch, so that's going to be there when the game comes out on November 5th. But there's no mention at all of an Easter egg or a main quest in it. I'm starting to get the impression that, like Outbreak, we're not going to have a main quest for some time. But I would love to be wrong. I'd love for there to be a main quest. Um, you know, obviously, I'd like to do the hunt and stuff like that on stream. That's always a lot of fun. But the fact that they didn't even sort of hint it, they didn't say like, oh, maybe there's some secrets or maybe you'll be able to do this. They just said like, oh, you'll play as long as you can until you either exfil or die. And that's it. Um, that's kind of making me think that maybe we're not going to get a quest. It'll be interesting. They have been reinforcing this a new experience and it's not a round based map or Outbreak or Onslaught. This is something completely new. And to be honest, I'm not sure how much more we're going to hear of it before launch. If anything, that makes it more mysterious. You know, we can go in and discover what's there. But I think there's going to be a few angry people if we get to launch and then suddenly, you know, people are hunting for an Easter egg that doesn't actually exist. Hopefully they'll confirm it one way or another. 
Now, on to Warzone. There's loads of information about Warzone. And this is a little bit more complicated because there's a lot of different things going on um, between now and the new map. So there is a new Warzone map that we all know about, a specific one. It's called Caldera, and it's coming on December 3rd. If you buy Vanguard, you'll be able to play it 24 hours early on December 2nd. Between now and then, there's a bunch of stuff happening in Warzone. So on November 18th, Operation Flashback begins. This is a new playlist that they've said will bring back memories from across the last year and a half of Warzone. I'd expect to see bits from the old map return maybe, so like maybe we'll have something where there's some hint of dam maybe, um, as well as some references to maybe the bunkers, some of the old Easter eggs would be nice. So, uh, I think it'd be funny if all of the blueprints for like various overpowered weapons like dual dematis and things like that i think that would be quite funny uh, maybe the snake shot revolvers and they've mentioned in their events like haunting of verdansk in the 80s thing i wouldn't be surprised to see the vodjanoi come back maybe something to do with know your history or the train there's a lot of stuff that's happened in warzone over the last year and a bit so i wouldn't be surprised to see little bits from all of those things come back into that event then a week later on november 24th there's secrets of the pacific they've stated that this is created by Beanox, who as far as i know always used to handle the pc versions of call of duty but i don't know maybe they're doing other stuff now and that's going to begin in both fang guard multiplayer and warzone so the secrets of the pacific event is all about getting intel about the new map about caldera and what's going on in the pacific so it looks like it's gonna be one of those things you know where you get like a set of 10 or however many challenges in multiplayer and in warzone and every time you complete one i'm guessing you'll get a bit of intel and maybe a calling card or an emblem or something like that then on november 30th and december 1st so a week after that there's going to be an event that's also created by Beanox, and it's called the last hours of verdansk they haven't said much about it other than like like it's going to be the end of Verdansk and then they did like a ellipse they did a dot 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 at the end so maybe there'll be more to come from Verdansk in future I wouldn't be surprised if it came back in a future game or something but I'd expect to see a load of explosions I assume they're going to blow up Verdansk again like what else are they going to do um so yeah like on November 30th and December 1st that, that's going to be like a proper event I think you know it'll be one of those things where you go and experience it and you can experience it as many times as you want, but it removes the other playlists. And then Verdansk is over. Verdansk is no more. Rebirth Island, however, is going to stay. And on December 2nd, if you don't have Vanguard, all you're going to be able to play is Rebirth Island, because Verdansk would have been done away with with the last hours of Verdansk. And then all you'll have is Rebirth. But if you've bought Vanguard, you'll be able to play on the new map, which I assume a lot of people listening to this probably will have done. Then on December 2nd, the Ricochet Anti-Cheat will come to Warzone, which I know a lot of people are looking forward to with that kernel level driver that will be required to play the game on PC from them. And if, like I said, if you own Vanguard, you'll be able to play Caldera on December 2nd. If not, on December 3rd, everyone will be able to play the new map, Caldera. Apparently, it's roughly the same size as Verdansk, and as the name suggests, it features a massive volcano. They said there's over 200 points of interest, which sounds like an insane number, but, you know, I've got no idea. 200 could be, like, how many buildings there are if they consider each one a point of interest. It'll be interesting to see um, what that's like if it's the same size as Verdansk. It looks like it's probably denser than it. It looks like it doesn't have very much empty space, but I'm not sure, you know, maybe the jungle, some of that will be empty as well. I've got no idea. In the screenshots, you can see kind of some villages, some bridges, some, like, like transmitter towers and stuff like that it looks actually like there's one of the transmitter towers from Verdansk which is slightly strange um and obviously lots of dense jungle and what seems to be a fast moving but not very deep river at least it looks kind of fast moving just because you can see the froth around the edge of it I'm still not sure we're going to be able to swim in this because it doesn't look like there's any kind of big bodies of water but I don't know it'll be interesting to see whether we can swim at all in Vanguard let me know in the comments if you've seen in any of the trailers if there's any kind of swimming or anything I don't think I've seen any I can't remember whether you could swim in the beta i can't remember if there's any water that you could swim in um maybe there was who knows one of the massive additions that's coming to warzone is the addition of dogfighting with fighter planes so fighter planes are coming to warzone as a new vehicle type it looks like you know you'll be able to strafe people i'm assuming it'll work like a lot of first person shooter multiplayer games where planes are pretty good at taking out other vehicles but not that great at taking out infantry because they're so fast it's quite hard to aim um but it's going to change things up dramatically to counter the planes there's going to be a new mobile anti-aircraft vehicle and a stationary anti-aircraft turret and obviously the rocket launchers and stuff like that so there will be ways to taking them down i assume on you know in terms of the vanguard stuff we're not going to have helicopters in world war ii so planes are the new much more fast moving and i assume much harder to reuse 
type of aerial craft. I think if we're in the jungle, how many places are there going to be to land a plane? I'm assuming that you'll be taking off in it, but then once, you know, you've decided that you're done with it or you want to get out, you'll probably have to crash it. It'll be interesting to see if there's loads of like little runways dotted about and how that changes up the gameplay. Now, one of the big announcements with this blog that I hadn't heard of before, and I think lots of people have been wondering about, is how Vanguard's integration warzone is going to work. And the way they're going to do it is there's going to be two distinct sets of kind of main playlists for Vanguard at launch. There's going to be like Vanguard Royale at launch, and Vanguard Plunder apparently coming a bit later, not quite a launch. And those playlists will only have Vanguard vehicles and weapons. You'll still be able to use whatever operator you want, so all of the operators you've got, if you want to use Ghostface, that's absolutely fine. But everything else will be restricted to the Vanguard content. Content. So I think it'll be Vanguard perks and tacticals and lethals and stuff like that as well. And that means that the Vanguard content can kind of shine and it can establish a new meta and stuff like that. I'm really excited about that. I can't wait to play something that feels fresh and different. And like when I get the map on December 2nd, I'm really excited that I'll just be able to go into something that's completely new and different and not linked to the old Warzone at all, really. There's also going to be standard modes for the people who do want to keep all of the old Warzone stuff. So in the standard mode, so standard battle royale and plunder and stuff, you'll still have access to all of the current Warzone weapons and vehicles and all of that stuff, along with the new Vanguard stuff as well. So you'll have like helicopters and planes, which will be interesting to see how they work together. You'll have all of the Vanguard guns alongside the Black Ops Cold War and the Modern Warfare guns, all of those different things. So that'll be really interesting. And I imagine an absolute nightmare to balance. Like it's... I can't imagine it being anything other than a disaster to be honest but it'll be a lot of fun if it's very chaotic and you'll be able to play those modes the sort of standard battle royale and plunder on um the new map and rebirth and they also talked about there being like mini battle royales and there being resurgence and things like that so i think there'll be a lot of different modes that you'll be able to play on both rebirth and caldera I've got no idea if the Vanguard specific playlist is going to be permanent or if it's just going to be for launch. Maybe they'll just kind of wait to see what people prefer to play. Now, there's loads of other stuff in these blogs. There's other information about pre-order bonuses, including, importantly, no mention of a PlayStation exclusive mode, which in my mind is very, very good news. Remember, you can also unlock blueprints for the SDG and the Garand that you can use in Warzone right now if you want to level those guns up. You can just get them through the Battle Pass in Season 6. And if you do level up the SDG and the Garand, using those blueprints that progress will keep for vanguard's launch you'll kind of go into vanguard with two guns fully leveled up and the sdg in particular based on the beta was really really good so that might be something that's worth doing between now and vanguard's launch overall this blog post was awesome it had so much information in it but i still do have some questions the big one is for me will doran fang have a main quest at launch or the day after like is this going to be something where we're going to have a main quest in that kind of launch week because remember like d machine didn't have a quest on launch day it came on the friday i think on the day after um because i think the game launched on a thursday maybe can't remember how that worked um but yeah it'll be interesting to see whether it does have a main quest and whether they confirm it or not the other question i have is is warzone going to be a part of the vanguard launcher i've asked this a few times on twitter and haven't had a response I really hope that I'll be able to switch from multiplayer to zombies to Warzone without having to load up a separate game because it's kind of a bit of a pain. I've seen, you know, I've asked this on Twitter and from people who have no idea, I've had loads of different people saying like, yes, it's definitely going to be part of the new launcher or no, it's definitely not going to be part of the new launcher. So I'd really like to hear some official word on that. That'd be really interesting. And obviously the big question we all have, how are we going to have time to play all of this? Like, Call of Duty's coming out in like a week, and then there's Forza coming out, there's Battlefield coming out, there's Halo coming out, and there's so much content in all of these games. It's absolutely amazing, but it's going to be exhausting too. If you want to see me playing all these games, twitch.tv forward slash geeky pastimes. I will obviously be streaming Vanguard at launch. So the day it launches, I'll be doing a bunch of stuff in Zombies, probably playing a load of multiplayer as well. Um, and then when all of this stuff launches for Warzone on December 2nd, then I'll be going in there exploring the new map and looking for Easter eggs, of course, like always. So stay tuned. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.